Hi there, I'm Black Bright, um, broadcasting out of the UK. And um, yeah, thank you for subscribing. Thank you for appreciating my vlogs. Thank you for your comments. Yes, thank you very much. Um, somebody asked me to talk about or give my opinion on Theresa's May race. Theresa May's resignation. That's a bit of a tongue twister. Theresa May's resignation. Now, Theresa May is resigning from the Conservative and the Unionist Party on the 7th of May, apparently. And what does that mean? For me, I look at the woman first. I look at Theresa May as a woman in a male, patriarchal, dominated sector. Those men in there were not going to allow her to compromise. I bet whoever succeeds her, if it's a man, they're going to compromise. But they won't do it with her because it will be seen as them relenting to a woman. That is my opinion. Yes, she's made up cock-ups. I don't like her because of the hostility. Well, I shouldn't say I don't like her. But I don't like the fact that the hostility policy came out under her rule under her leadership, I should say, that resulted in a lot of people being unfairly deported and detained. And this austerity um, policy, according to one source, I think it was the British Medical Journal, suggested that um, about 120,000 people were killed in this country by the austerity policy. It doesn't say how or why. But the fact of the matter is, is that it's out there, that it's caused a lot of deaths, poverty, destitution. So I don't know how, I don't know what planet she's on when she talks about reducing the deficit and the national debt is being lowered. She sounds like Trump. What planet are they on? You know why they believe that? Because it doesn't affect them. For them, their income and their um, whatever money they have is protected. So they don't see what's happening to the little people like us. They don't understand our austerity. They don't understand what's going on. They delegate it out and assume that the people in charge, in quotes, are doing a good job. They go by numbers. They don't go by interacting with people and going around and actually seeing how those numbers and targets are reached. And so they assume that everything is hunky-dory. So when the job centre or the DWP say, oh, we've got um, so many people in work, they believe it. They don't know what they don't not understand that it's all the sanctions and all that kind of stuff. And one hour contracts, zero contracts are what are making it look like people are back to work. So they haven't got a clue. They haven't got a clue. So um, about Teresa, the woman, she's a Libra. She's a Libra born in September, just like Maggie Thatcher. The iron fist in the velvet glove. They, they come over as calm and nice and sweet, but there's a serious um, punch inside that velvet glove. And that is what they do. The problem with being a Libra is that you're indecisive. You do like to compromise. But the thing is, what she's saying, oh, yes, you've got to compromise. And that's important with the Brexit um, deal. But she wasn't willing to compromise or authorise compromise when it came to the hostility policy. So, you know, you're, you're going to compromise in one area and not the other. That's not right. That's not fair. And so when I, well, OK, going back to her, the woman. So she um, wanted to, oh, I wrote this down somewhere. So as a Libra woman, the traits are one of balance and compromise. That is, that shows in her speech that because she's delegated most of the dirty work to other people who are not willing to compromise and who don't have any um, allegiance to anybody else but the targets, then this is what's gone wrong. Librans are supposed to be fair. So you can see how she was trying to be fair to the EU, fair to fair to her cabinet. Indecisive. Yeah, people say she um, she goes back on what she says, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't take much for a Libran to switch. 
It doesn't mean that they're being deceitful. It means that they're indecisive. And sometimes the, the funny thing is, is that it they tend to be quite decisive on big decisions, but on small decisions, they tend to waver. And yeah, and like I said, eager to please. But the fact of the matter is, is that in 2016, she harps on about, oh, the British people voted to leave. It's only 51% for Christ's sake, 51.89% voted to leave. That's not the British public. If it was 80% or 90% or even 75%, then you could say, oh, the British public voted to leave. But it's only 51.89% voted to leave and 48.11% voted to remain. Look at that margin. It's not great margin. So I don't know why she harps on about, oh, we're leading, um, we're leading the people's choice and all that kind of stuff. The only reason why they want to leave the EU is got nothing to do with immigration, because as you can see, we've got a lot of EU nationals waiting to jump on. They're on an EU settlement scheme. Millions of them. So it's got nothing to do with that. It's got to do with taking away our human rights and replacing it with the British Bill of Rights that gives us no rights at all, especially as immigrants and foreign nationals. That's what all this leaving Brexit is about. It's got nothing to do with immigration. If it had to do with immigration, why are they asking people to come in? Why are they making out like, oh, it's a merit-based system and bringing immigrants in? If you don't want immigrants, regardless of whether they're rich or they're poor, you don't want them. So don't make it look like, oh, this is an immigration issue. It's not. And then they've got the damn nerve to bloody exploit them. They don't want them, but they exploit them by taking their money for all these courses and visas and whatever. And they're not doing what the people are paying their money for. So it's bigger than that. They don't want immigration. They don't want immigrants, but they want their money. They don't want immigrants, but they want their labour. That's the truth of the matter. <sighs> I'm getting passionate again. Um, yeah, um, what else? I think I've said, oh yeah, what was interesting, in Trump's speech, he said, oh, he likes the woman and he's going to meet her in two weeks. Not to talk about her leaving, you know. He's going to talk to her in two weeks. Even though she's leaving, I don't see the point about the CIA, FBI and Russia hoax. Why would he bring that up when she's leaving? She ain't going to want to be talking about all of that. And what influence does she have anyway? It has to be something else. Trump, he, ugh, I don't know why he even bothers to open up his mouth because he always puts his bloody foot in it. What the hell has that got to do with it? Unless it's all a part of the same thing. But I think, to be honest, I think she was bullied out. I think they stuck their feet in because she was a woman and because they could. And like I said, I bet you, whoever they're talking about Boris is getting in there. Oh no, what a nightmare. But whoever gets in there. I bet you they are willing to compromise because with men, the majority of men, they just trust men more with decisions. They, you know, men, a lot of men feel that women are emotional, up and down. And when you hear them talk about Theresa May, it is about her not being able to make her mind up, being indecisive, being this. And now make it worse. She cried at the end of the bloody um, thing. All we're hearing about is her tears. So, yeah, now she represents a typical woman. She's broken down. They have broken her down. And, yeah, that is, they, they've won their battle. And now they believe they can proceed as they planned towards a Brexit that is not in the interest of the people. It's in the interest of the rich and the powerful. Well, good luck to them. Um, yeah, good luck. What can I say? And, and um, Theresa May? You tried, but to be honest, you was up against a brick wall and you should not have bought about that hostile policy without reading every word first. That's another thing with these policies. They don't read them. They get somebody to draft them. They approve them and off they go. They don't know if they're fair, unfair. They just delegate and leave it to the powers that be. And those people who they who they delegate it to, 
sometimes they need oversight. A lot of times they need oversight. And if there is no oversight, things go through and then people are like, oh, I didn't realise that. I don't even know if they go through a legal um, vetting because half of those policies, I'm sure they're illegal and they only find out what the, the, the illegality when something goes wrong. Like when all those, um, when the Windrush people were wrongfully deported or where people are being detained without an appeal. That's when they find out where the policy is wrong. But after that, the damage has been done. And look how many people have suffered, you know, before they find out. A legal person should be looking at those policies. Anyway, enough about that. Theresa May, see ya.